Hey there, today we are going to summarize the book known as The Self-Care Solution by Dr. Jennifer Ashton. This book consists of ideas related to inspiring, practical, and informative, illustrated with helpful photos and charts. The Self-Care Solution teaches you how to recalibrate your life to enjoy a better, healthier year, one month at a time. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Make one change per month for life-changing results. Many people go through their lives without ever feeling the need for change. They go through the same motions, feeling neither satisfied nor motivated to uproot their routines, constantly prioritizing others' interests over their own. But sooner or later, there comes a sudden epiphany, a tipping point that makes you look back and rethink your lifestyle choices. Jennifer Ashton didn't feel like she had the time for herself. Her previous year had been a challenging one. She had dealt with the aftermath of her ex-husband's suicide and tried to be there for her family. However, she realized that self-care was something she shouldn't be placing far down her priority list. She needed it more than ever before. Humankind has been evolving for millions of years. Today, we still require maintenance. Our nutrition, movement, and rest are critical. Still, technological progress has granted us the possibility to mind our physical and mental well-being more generously while also being the ones tormenting us. What is clear is that we must upgrade our needs to survive in the modern environment. One healthy change per month ensures gradual improvement in physical and psychological well-being. However, don't be tempted to try more than one per month, as you'll risk overwhelming yourself and failing. Instead, take the slow approach and implement bite-sized changes. Commit to a dry January and fit February to kickstart a fresh new year. Most people don't realize how much they drink. Jennifer Ashton thought she only drank in moderation, with tequila being her tipple of choice. However, she realized that while the number of drinks she consumed might be low, the glass size was increasing. At that point, she realized she couldn't keep giving her patients advice about limiting alcohol intake if she wasn't doing the same thing. Dry January means not drinking alcohol for the full 30 days of January. However, if you have a dependency on alcohol, do not attempt this challenge. Instead, consult your doctor to find the best solution. The first week of dry January exposed Ashton's increased desire for alcohol due to deprivation. However, her skin condition improved as the dehydrated effects of alcohol wore off. Her attention switched to conversations and food more than drinks when hanging out. She began drinking sparkling water more often as her stomach started bloating less. By the end of dry January, Ashton's health and social life had taken a positive turn. She found herself interested in more than alcohol, reinventing her personality. Her hobbies improved as well. As for her health, the joy of inner and outer cleanliness made her reassess the value of weekend hangouts. A month of planks and push-ups every single day is another challenge on the way to a better life. These exercises are easy to do, don't require any equipment, and can be modified for back problems. They also lengthen and strengthen the muscles effectively. Try doing as many push-ups and planks as possible for the entire month of February. Keep in mind, though, planks sometimes trigger back pain. Switching between the forearm to the side plank is a practical modification that will help manage the ache and increase the results. Push-ups also burn calories and help protect the body against osteoporosis. Similarly, planks benefit core muscles, improving your posture, breathing, and general well-being. Catch your breath in spring. Two popular practices involving breathing are meditation and physical exercise. Practicing them will take the whole of March and April. For example, Ashton committed to doing 20 minutes of meditation daily to become more spiritual. She found that the morning was the best time for her, as it set the tone for the rest of the day, and when evening came around, she was too tired to concentrate. Finding the right meditation that brings satisfaction is essential for the best result. Focus on your breathing and block out the noise from outside at first. Work up from there. Regular meditation helps you to focus and be more productive and positive. It can also improve appetite, reduce cravings, and help control eating habits. In terms of psychology, good quality meditation adds to empathy and compassion. According to the author's experience, people around her noticed her mood and understanding improved. Good meditation has one crucial rule, presence. So, make sure you turn off your phone. Distractions will easily ruin your meditation session. If you struggle to sleep, meditate in the evening and notice the difference. Physical activity has similar benefits to meditation and can take the form of a gym session, a run, a brisk walk, a swim, or gardening. 
our bodies need a combination of weight training and aerobic exercise for optimum health. A 2012 study revealed that poor mobility contributes to death rates in the same way as smoking. Cardio helps lower the risk associated with serious diseases like heart failure. Track the amount of cardio you're doing to keep an eye on your progress, mix up your activities and find a friend to do them with. For a month, try dedicating 20 minutes most days per week to cardio exercise. You will quickly find that your stress levels decrease the more you sweat, helping you relax. On top of that, your sleep pattern will significantly improve. Don't be surprised if one day you find yourself slightly addicted to physical activities as you start noticing results. The excitement and satisfaction will encourage you to keep going. Make your eating habits sustainable and healthy. The challenge for the next three months is fixing your eating behavior, from meals and drinks, to separate ingredients. Nutrition plays a fundamental role in a fulfilling life, so your approach must be systematic. To start with, how much red meat do you eat? Excessive red meat consumption contributes to an increased risk of cancer, while switching to a plant-based diet can help lower it. Most people don't get their daily recommended amount of fruit or vegetables, therefore missing out on important vitamins and minerals. Cutting out red meat for a month in exchange for more plant-based foods may cause worries about nutrition, but it creates space for meal experiments. You can make soups, salads, stews, and drinks. Hydration receives little attention during the day. Dehydration can cause severe health issues like kidney stones and brain, heart, or liver impairment. Some trivial problems include headaches, nausea, weight gain, and even bad breath. The daily water intake norm differs depending on sex, weight, and age. Women should drink 2, 7 liters of water, while the water norm for men is 3.7 liters. The effects of regular hydration appear on the first day as you feel more energized. It also helps regulate your appetite, as often you may confuse thirst for hunger. The cherry on top is craving less junk food and reducing night nibbling. The last food challenge out of the three is cutting sugar. This sneaky ingredient often goes unnoticed in our daily menu. Processed foods contain high amounts of sucrose, glucose, or dextrose, the sugar-containing compounds that get lost in translation. Sugar addiction quickly follows our unawareness, resulting in ruined skin and teeth, slower cognition, and an increased risk of diabetes and heart disease. The choice to go cold turkey on sugar or take a step-by-step -step approach is individual. The healthy method is cutting the sugary treats before handling the main course. It ensures a smooth transition and fewer cravings. A plant-based diet and mindfulness can help develop a conscious approach to sugar. Commit to walking step-by-step. New York is one of the cities where dwellers have to walk more than anywhere else in the U.S. Yet only a unique few achieve the recommended 10,000 daily steps. Walking is a natural but overlooked activity, yet, its benefits are inarguable. Regular walking will help you lose more weight. Walking produces as many results as high-intensity exercises and low-carb diets. Suppress an excessive appetite, which is perfect for sugar cutters. Encourage health changes. For one, Walking reduces breast cancer risk. Another trick is stimulating bone density, meaning fewer traumas. Improve mentality and cognition. Walking reduces the risk of depression and boosts memory and creativity by increasing blood flow. Initially, snatching the opportunity to walk more can take time and effort. But gradually, you will learn to notice the flexes in the ladder. Set a one-month personal record from as little as 3,000 steps to almost 20,000 steps per day. Investing in a pedometer or a mobile app that tracks your steps is a good idea. You'll quickly find yourself eager to beat your record for the previous day, slowly achieving the 10,000 steps goal. Have a goal you want to reach and bear it in mind. You can also compete with a friend. Beating each other's high scores is motivation to move more. If you head outside to do your walking, You'll benefit from the fresh air and natural surroundings, but if poor weather traps you inside, walking on a treadmill or simply pacing around the room is just as good. Studies show that a brisk walk through the office or even unappealing suburbs still unlocks dopamine from our brain's hypothalamus. If no treadmill is available, stretching is another way to improve your mobility. Flexibility exercises help boost muscle recovery after the training and let them relax. Other health advantages of stretching include strengthening the muscles, preventing tissue and joint injuries, correcting posture, relieving digestion and nerve problems, releasing dopamine without cravings, reducing the risk of cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. Regardless of your choice, movement is the key.
so you don't lose anything by not choosing another option. Clean that search history. Most of us spend far too much time on our cell phones every day, to the point where a new phrase, fubbing, has emerged. It means you're snubbing the other person in social surroundings because you're too engrossed in your phone. It's annoying for people around you and also quite rude. Spending too much time on your phone can quickly kill your social skills. Other detrimental effects include depression, insomnia, weight shifts, and back pain. Carpal tunnel syndrome pain in the forearm and hand is unique to phone addiction. Finally, our memory muscles cripple, and our brains overall, as we rely more on our phones. Everyone has this bad habit of taking their phones to bed and checking them first thing in the morning. You will soon find that your phone is interfering with your personal life, even if you strive to be more mindful. Instead, try going cold turkey on your phone, leave it at home every time you leave for non-urgent business for the next month. You will quickly find yourself feeling lighter upon losing the weight of the internet. Suddenly, you have time for your family and friends you could never see before. Even your posture will improve after you stop hunching over your phone. In sum, the benefits of phone abstinence are healthier weight, better sleep, improved posture, better vision, and healthier wrists. Oh, and let's not forget about the renaissance of your social life. According to Apple statistics, people turn to their phones 30 times per day, in a year, it is around 300,000. It's very easy to become addicted to technology, and you probably don't even realize it's happening to you. Turn off notifications to avoid the temptation to constantly check. And be aware of other people who are always on their phones, it's often easier to spot a negative habit when you see other people doing it in front of you. However, Ashton recommends telling people you're reducing your usage, so they know you're not ignoring their messages. It also creates accountability, which is a great bonus. Sleeping Beauty knows her hours. Jennifer Ashton always assumed she was a good sleeper, but as her career became busier, she noticed her sleep pattern going down the drain. Sleep quality dictates your frame of mind the following day, even if it's only one night of bad dreams. You probably don't even realize that you're sleep deprived, which seriously affects overall health in the long term. But as you think about it, the six or even seven hours of sleep that seemed enough are, in fact, not enough. The best way to determine the right amount of sleep for you is to keep a sleep diary and track the number of sleep hours you get and how it relates to your physical and mental well-being. Ashton noticed a night of six hours of sleep made her feel mentally drained and sluggish, but when she got eight hours, she felt refreshed and energized. One method to track your sleep is through a mobile app. Another way is getting used to the silent mode of your phone. Setting a regular bed and waking time will help regulate your biological clock and, thus, your sleep quality. Everyone needs a slightly different amount of sleep, tracking it will help you find what works best for you. Getting more sleep has many health benefits, including helping you feel happier, look younger, and lose weight. To back this up, a 2003 study published in Sleep Journal found that people who regularly slept for six hours per night performed just as poorly on cognitive tests as those who didn't sleep for two nights, even though the former didn't realize they were lacking in sleep. Avoiding self-sabotage should become a separate goal. Your connections and plans depend heavily on your energy, and sleep is the most natural and easiest way to restore it. Change your sleep environment or practice separate rest from your partner to find the most rejuvenating routine. Small rituals like washing your face, lighting a candle, or reading a few pages may summon the yawning faster. See life through childlike eyes. As life goes on, we tend to lose ourselves in routine business, responsibilities, and relationships. But most terrifyingly, we scatter our self-love and childlike vision. Old but true, we have too little time on earth to waste it whipping ourselves for our mistakes or weaknesses. Doing so only undermines our physical and mental health. A little silliness is necessary occasionally. Challenge your usual demeanor and laugh more, enjoying childlike moments of glee. We could all do with more laughter to reduce the dangerous effects of stress. Facing your mistakes with a laugh helps you to learn from them and overcome problems that stand in your way. As long as the issue no longer torments you, celebrating your endurance is essential to avoid taking it for granted. On the contrary, fully accepting yourself is impossible until you can embrace your flaws as much as your strengths. Try and look for opportunities for fun and see things through the eyes of a child. Ashton found that a comedy prop a toy tiara helped her regain her sense of fun. 
Although it may have looked ridiculous, she chose to wear it to make the occasion more childish and let herself and her colleagues see things from a light-hearted perspective. A good laugh is beneficial. Research shows laughter reduces cortisol, the stress hormone, and makes the risk of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's significantly smaller. You can laugh your pain in the face, endorphins from a hearty chuckle relieve the pain. Laughter releases negative emotions and improves your self-image. And when your confidence grows, it's easier to laugh at yourself. Learn to be your own best friend and occasionally laugh at yourself. You don't need to be around people to do this. Laughing alone can be just as fun. The more you find joy in every day and laugh as much as you can, the more contagious it will be to you and those around you. Conclusion, making small changes can have surprisingly profound effects on your health and well-being. Make tiny improvements every month rather than huge changes all at once. As a result, the benefits will increase the chances of you putting in more effort every day. But do not try and do too much at once because you'll probably throw in the towel. Personal development comes in various ways, as a meditation, a morning run, and even as one cocktail less than usual. Find out what works for you and maintain the habits that give you the best results. Everyone is different, and you might need to focus on one area more than another. Keeping a diary is a good idea to see the cumulative effects and work out the changes that bring the best benefits to your life. Share your journey with your friends and family and encourage them to make positive changes in their lives, too. It doesn't have to be the start of the year to try this. Choose the start of the next month or even the next week and work out what change you want to begin with. It's never a bad time to begin. There is also no need to follow each challenge in a strict order. Beauty is in individualism. As long as you know your needs, you've already succeeded in the most important challenge awareness. You'll quickly notice how good it feels by being more mindful of your health and focusing on self-care. Try this one, set aside 20 minutes to half an hour daily for self-care, and do not cancel it. 2. Tell your loved ones about the challenges you're attempting to create accountability and keep you on track. 3. Keep a self-care diary and note down the best experiments for you. That's it folks. If you like our videos please consider subscribing to this channel and turn on the bell icon so that next time you won't miss any update on this channel. Thank you for your time and love. Until next time, take care.